Here's another gentleman who had recently had a hemimandiblectomy done after his tumor was removed. And here you can see he's initially struggling to use the guide flange. Now, the guide flange I like to make, I know there are so many types in textbooks, but the guide flange I like to make has a little extension on the palate. It's always made on the maxilla. There's nothing on the mandible to essentially deviate the unaffected side. So in this gentleman's case, it's the left side and not the right side. The right side is the side of the surgery. The left side is unaffected. So it's placed on the left side with a little ramp so that when they hit that ramp, they slide into occlusion on the left side. Now you may see this and say, hey, it's pretty obvious. Why not make that ramp on the palate? Why not make it a little bit more towards the center so that he doesn't have to use his hand and push things in so that he gets his occlusion on the unaffected side? Well, the problem with moving a ramp more to the center is it's going to have a huge chance of affecting his speech. He's going to have a bigger problem with swallowing. And then when you start developing additional problems with any kind of device which you're giving, compliance tends to drop. So this is why we kind of have to choose a location which will achieve the desired effect. And that is why we chose this particular location on the palate. But now you can see that even without the device, he's been practicing with it for a couple of months. And you can see even without the device, he's able to bring his teeth together on the left side, which is a huge Herculean effort. I hope I've confused you enough. This is the Dental Review Guy signing off with a smile.